Hello. Hi. This is Melissa. And this is Kat. Welcome. Hi. I just wanted to say that P-E-R-R-A-U-L-T is per row, according Whatever. to the Google <laughs> lady who gave me the translation. So... My three years of French did me wrong. It was two and a half because I dropped the other half. Well, it is Perot. So it's Charles Perot. He wrote The Evil Fairy, which is what Maleficent, or I guess Sleeping Beauty is based off of Maleficent too. But anyway, you're welcome. Thank you for showing me up. Yes. <laughs> Great. Let's do this. Yay. We have an audience today. Who, Kat? Oh, my friend Andrea. <laughs> <laughs> so if you're chuckling in the background, that's why. <laughs> Her and one of my favorite Squishmallows are just chilling on Mel's bed. <laughs> this is our first live show. <laughs> it's an honor. <laughs> <laughs> Tragical live. <laughs> the free show for now. It's very intimate. <laughs> It's on my bed. <laughs> it's got wine and a Squishmallow. Yes. Also, I'm drinking soda, which I never do. So I'm about to lose my bananas. <laughs> this time we're here to tell you why onward is tragical no one told me there were wizards in this i feel like i've been lied to i feel like <laughs> nobody understands me i don't understand why no one told me this was about wizards yeah all i knew was there was a van and brothers in a dead dad that was like the gist of what i knew of this movie I knew there was a van with a unicorn on it, but they're like elf looking things. I didn't know there was wizards. What's elf. up with that? They're not elf looking. They are elves. <laughs> <laughs> elf wizards. Yeah. Okay. Anyway. <laughs> we were unaware. I have fun facts. Woo! One of the most iconic monsters in Dungeons and Dragons. All the Dungeons and Dragons people are going to be like, we know. But <laughs> one of the most iconic monsters is the gelatinous cube. It was in the very first edition of Dungeons and Dragons in 1974. It is a staple foe that players encounter early on in their adventuring. So it's like an early monster. It's not like a higher level monster. I don't know anything about Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> Me either. I just know you like make up your own rules as you go. I don't think you make up your own rules. I think it's like a choose your own adventure. Like we love here on this podcast. <laughs> so <laughs> it's just like a choose your own adventure. And apparently sometimes you run into gelatinous cubes. That's so interesting. Yep. The Burger Shire, a fast food restaurant, has a sign reading, now serving second breakfast. How did we miss that? <gasps> How did we miss that? And that's uh, from Lord of the Rings. If you didn't know. The hobbits have second breakfast and they live in the Shire. Mm -hmm. Triple Dent gum is sold at the gas station and in Barley Visit, which is an Easter egg from Inside Out. You know how the oh, Triple Dent gum? Yeah. Triple Dent gum. I did it. Song gets stuck in everybody's head. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. That's cute. I like that. There are also beverages advertised in the gas station called Cloak and Cola and Mountain Doom. So another Lord of the Rings reference. Look at that. And Saterade. Saterade! <laughs> I love when they do that. I like that. Like in Zootopia when they had all the musical artists. Like who? <laughs> <laughs> like Hyena Gomez. <laughs> Never forget Hyena Gomez. Bringing it back. And there was a lot of good ones, but those ones were my favorite. I like the Saterade. Yeah, I want to drink Saterade. <laughs> So this is a Lampy original. <laughs> Not Lampy. Also known as a Pixar movie. I didn't know this was Pixar. I think I knew. This movie came out like <laughs> right when the pandemic started. Mm -hmm. So I just never, I had a million other things to worry about. That's, that's fair. Lampy was there <laughs> in the beginning. Lampy. Jumping on that Pixar eye, <laughs> being Lampy. It starts with the world was magical. I don't know. There was hissing unicorns. Okay. Can we just talk about it? <laughs> Listen, it's like there were mermaids, fairies, wizards, and hissing unicorns. Okay, well, I don't think the unicorns were hissing in the before times. 
I think, yeah, they were like, they're supposed to be like stray cats. Yeah, but... <laughs> stray hissing unicorns in the alleyways. <laughs> the movie opens up to the magical world. There's unicorns, wizards, trolls, sprites, dragons, you name it. They had it. And then this wizard guy, I guys, I love wizards. He's trying to light up a cabin for this bro and then this lady's like well i invented the light bulb so the wizard just like has nothing to do with his life anymore yeah they literally just have technology and then magic no longer exists how yeah. boring so the wizard just like isn't cool anymore because this lady's like well i found electricity so happy it was a lady though wasn't it a lady mm-hmm. i feel like it was mm-hmm. girl power <laughs> heck yeah she didn't need no kite exactly So magic fades away because electricity, basically. And this is when the unicorns are stray cats and they're just hissing in the streets. (laughs) Like in a cul-de-sac, there's just hissing unicorns. In a (laughs) cul-de-sac. Okay. I love them so much. (laughs) They're so cute. And it's Ian, who is our main character. He's a little elf boy with blue pointy ears. It's his 16th birthday. Yeah. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, Ian. And his uh, mom is a stereotypical Pixar mom. She is hella thickums. <laughs> thicker than a bowl of oatmeal. <laughs> she looks great. Good for her. <laughs> she is in the living room doing fitness cyclops videos. There's a cyclops and he's doing the fitness. He's Sean T, but he's Sean I. <laughs> <laughs> we probably think that's way funnier than it actually is. People, people know who Sean T is, right? I hope so. I hope so, too. <laughs> Sean T, but he has one eye, so it's Sean I. I love it. So, oh, yeah, man. mom's doing her fitness tapes, and good for her. And she's drinking whey protein, and <laughs> she's doing the most. <laughs> she got her herbal life in the kitchen. <laughs> the herbal life. <laughs> Ian is wearing his dad's sweatshirt from his college. Don't remember the name of it. I don't know. Yeah, I, I didn't write it <laughs> I down. I didn't either. I don't think that was important. It was just the fact that it was his dad's. Yeah, it was his dad's sweater. So obviously his dad has passed on. R.I.P. It's a Disney movie. There's got to be at least one dead parent. Ian's dad. Exactly. Ian's mom is like, did you invite all your friends to the party at the house tonight? And he's like, Mom, what friends? Mm -mm. And he doesn't have any friends. He's such a nice kid. He's such a sweetie pie. And he's not, like, weird. I wonder why he doesn't have friends. Anxiety. (laughs) (laughs) Just pushing my problems on (laughs) We only got an hour here, (laughs) Kat. We don't have time for this. (laughs) I want to (laughs) know. I have my first bone to pick with this movie. I'm ready, go. Ian's brother, his older brother, looks just like him, just beefier and taller. Why is his name Barley and Ian's name is Ian? Oh, I thought you were going to ask about, say, who voices him. But yeah, also that. (laughs) Oh, yeah. It's, um, Ian is Tom Holland Holland Mm -hmm. and Chris Pratt (laughs) is Barley. Yeah. But it's fine because we like Barley. But yeah, Barley is like a weird name. And then they were like, and Ian. He makes ale. (laughs) <laughs> it's true i love him even more now <laughs> anyway it was just weird like they couldn't give him all weird names yeah i feel like everyone else in the whole movie had really normal names oh, like colt bronco cat. <laughs> <laughs> well okay not the horse man but like Corey. That's her name is the manticore and she goes Cor- by Corey. <laughs> short for the manticore <laughs> Right, but that's still normal. It's her species. She's the only one. <laughs> it's just weird how some of them have normal names and some of them don't. Anyway, I guess it's fine. <laughs> Barley is his big brother, and he is obsessed with Dungeons and Dragons. And he loves all the lore about it. And some of the places in their town are original landmarks of <laughs> Dungeons and Dragons, right? Yeah, I think the game that he plays that's like... Dungeons and Dragons uh-huh. is is like based on the past. So it's based on when the world was actually run by magic. And it's I think it's like instead of having like history books about it, they have a freaking nerd game. Pretty much. So yeah. Barley goes around town in his van that he has rebuilt with a unicorn on the side named Guinevere. Obsessed. I want that van. And he ties himself to landmark so they won't get torn down and whatnot. Someone has to do it. This is really awkward for Ian and Barley's mom because Ian's mom is dating the town sheriff who is a centaur named Colt Bronco. (laughs) Literally just two types of horse. (laughs) 
just two horses. <laughs> Colt Bronco. And when he laughs, he goes, Nee. <laughs> and it's really fucking dumb. <laughs> but it's kind of funny. Also, he drives a cop car, but it's like the car is his whole body. He like sits down in it with his little horse body. And I don't know why it's the best part of the whole movie for me. <laughs> He's him in his cop car. <laughs> <laughs> and Barley's like, you could just run, you know. And he's like, no, I'll just take the car. He doesn't care. Yeah, he's literally a half horse, but takes a car. Okay. So Barley wants to knight Ian for his 16th birthday. And in the process, he accidentally rips his dad's sweater, which really makes Ian very sad because that's the only thing he has of his dad. And he tells Barley, at least you have like three memories of dad. I don't have anything. Yeah. So we find out that dad died when Ian was like a baby. I think he wasn't even born yet. Very sad. Very sad. So Ian has just been trying to eat breakfast this whole time. So he ends up leaving the house early before school to go to a fast food place to get breakfast on his way. And he runs into a guy. The guy in the fast food place sees Ian's hoodie and he's like, oh, like you go to that college. That's where I went. And he's like, no, it was my dad's. And he was like, oh, my God, Lightfoot. I went to school with him, too. And I remember him. And he was always so funny and he was so full of life and he always wore purple socks and he was so weird and so cool. I know. I was like, oh, my God, he wore purple socks. He was really out there. <laughs> What's his name? Wilden Lightfoot. Wilden Lightfoot. Yeah, mm-hmm. he's like, he always wore purple socks. He was crazy. If that makes you crazy, I'm fucking bananas. <laughs> So Barley goes to class and there's a nasty, big ass, I don't know, monster that sits behind him. Who cares? And he puts his feet like up on his seat. So Ian can barely sit in his seat in class. And this kid has his crusty toes on Ian's chair. And he's a big dude. His name is Gorgamon and I hate him. (laughs) It's just so nasty. I think they're just trying to drive the point home that Ian is a pushover Mm -hmm. and not very cool. So then we go to driver's ed and Ian is a very nervous driver. Literally me in high school. (laughs) I was like, give me the keys. Let's go. No, I got my permit and I never actually drove in driver, like in driver's ed. How did you pass? Like you didn't. You didn't pass. No, I did pass. I did pass. (laughs) I remember Coach Agathias, who was our driver's ed teacher, called me shuffles because I don't pick my feet up. (laughs) And that's bullying for you. A grown man bullying a high schooler. I loved him. (laughs) That's bullying. I like Coach Ag if you're a listener. (laughs) I used to switch shoes with other people who wore flip-flops so they could drive, and then I didn't drive. And I'd be like, oh, I didn't wear the right shoes today. I forgot they made you wear laced-up shoes to driver's ed. Yeah, you couldn't have flip-flops on. I was like, we live in Florida. Anyway, moving on. (laughs) So Ian has a to-do list, basically, and he, on his to-do list, is to invite people to his party. And he goes and he invites these kids And then Barley pulls up in his van to drive him home. And then Ian gets really nervous. And the guys are like, oh, yeah, we'll come to your party. Sounds fun. He's like, no, never mind. Because he's super embarrassed. Because freaking Barley Barley showed up in his creeper van. (laughs) And he was trying to do the ceremony again. He got out his little sword and he was like, so Ian Lightfoot. (laughs) Ian was like, it's actually not my birthday. And I'm so sorry I ever talked to you. And then he has like, he's writing his no on his hand. He's like, invite people to party on his hand. (laughs) He has like a script to invite these kids to his party and he ends up getting the ink all over his face and it's just like such a train (laughs) so now he has ink all over his face and he has to get in his brother's creeper van (laughs) guinevere is super sick though yeah it's a pretty dope van i want a van so back at home ian is sitting in his room wallowing and he's listening to a tape of his dad in a tape player boombox kind of situation His mom comes in and she's all like, oh, are your friends coming? Let's go get your cake. We're going to party. And he's like, I didn't invite anybody. (laughs) I don't have any friends. Don't have any friends. It's just going to be me, you, Barley, and Colt Bronco, I guess. (laughs) (laughs) Not Colt Bronco. (laughs) So mom's like, I have an idea. I have a gift for you. Your dad told me to give it to you and your brother when you were both 16. So I'm going to give it to you. So she goes up to the attic and she gets the gift and it is a fucking wizard staff yeah it is it's so cool it's a wizard staff and a phoenix gem you gotta have the phoenix gem gotta have the phoenix gem which is apparently super rare which is really cool so rare so barley is super excited and ian is kind of just bewildered and not sure what to do barley keeps trying to do 
a spell that was left by his dad to bring him back for one full day. With the staff came a spell to bring their father back for a full day. Barley is trying the spell over and over and over for like two hours. It doesn't work. So they just give up. And the mom was like, well, it's the thought that counts, basically. And it's like, I mean, okay. (laughs) He just wants to meet his dad for the first time. And mom's like, well, that sucks. It's really depressing. (laughs) So Barley and mom leave the room. And Ian's just kind of pouting in his room with the staff and the Phoenix gem just chilling. He looks down at the paper that has a spell on it. And he just starts kind of reading out the spell out loud to himself. The Phoenix gem starts lighting up and the wizard staff starts doing some stuff. And then it starts to work. So he grabs the wizard staff and he's like holding it up. And then Barley comes running in and they're all excited. And then there's feet and then there's purple socks. And then there's some dad khakis and then there's a belt. And then stuff starts to go all weird. And then the Phoenix gem blows up. Barley tries to help and he kind of freaks Ian out. And then Ian loses the spell, basically. Yeah, Barley gets like overly excited excited he's like oh this is like my DD stuff this is so cool do this do this do this and instead ian like loses it so barley goes over to his dad's legs and his feet <laughs> and he used to play drums on his dad's shoes which is like so cute and so he plays drums on his dad's shoe so his dad will know it's him because yeah. he doesn't have any ears he can't hear them or see them or look at them he's literally just legs and feet his dad khakis <laughs> he's just dad khakis and purple socks can't forget the purple socks So Barley is like, we have to finish the spell. We have to go get another Phoenix gem. And Ian is like, great, let's do it. So on the way to the Manticore, who has the map for the Phoenix gem, they are in Guinevere and Barley is explaining to Ian that he has to recite the spells from his heart's fire. (laughs) His heart's fire. If you're not saying the spell from your heart's fire, it won't happen. Gotta say it with feeling. And Ian has like zero heart fire. So he's, he's having a really hard time with it. Negative heart fire. So they get to the Manticore's tavern and Ian is like, I can't believe this place is still here. It's so creepy and scary. It's like a creepy mansion, like a Scooby-Doo mansion. And they're walking into this place and they have their dad on a freaking leash. Dad is literally on a leash with a like potato sack for a body and sunglasses and a hat on. Yeah, they put him in like a vest and like a hoodie and then a hat and sunglasses. He's looking (laughs) good. So they bust open the doors to the Manticore's Tavern and guess what, guys? It's a Chuck E. Cheese. It's a Chuck E. Cheese! (laughs) (laughs) It's literally like a Chuck E. Cheese up in there. Oh, it's so good. They find the Manticore. Uh, She goes by Corey these days and she is the restaurant manager (laughs) of this Chuck E. Cheese. And who is she voiced by? The Manticore is Octavia Spencer. We love. We love Ma. Ma's the best movie (laughs) ever. It's so good. And the map is on the wall and she won't let them have it because... She's got payroll to do. (laughs) Yeah, she also says it's too dangerous and she doesn't want more people dying in her adventures that she sends them on. I'm like, how many people did you get killed? Yeah, (laughs) they're trying to get the Manticore to give them the map. And she's like, I'm not doing it. It's too dangerous. And she starts getting like really worked up. And then she loses it and she burns the Chuck E. Cheese mascot, which is literally... It's her. It's a Manticore, right? (laughs) It's literally her it's got the curly hair and everything so there's like a manticore mascot <laughs> running around the restaurant like chucky chucky cheese charles entertainment charles cheese, entertainment <laughs> cheese. <laughs> and she sets it on fire and there's a there's probably a 17 year old in there well, first she rips its head off and then she sets the head on fire <laughs> like the manticore loses her shit it's really they're good. Like, don't you want to go on adventure and she's like i do and she just like loses her mind but (laughs) Anyway, uh, she sets the map on fire on accident in the process and burns down the whole Manticore Tavern. It's a good thing the children's menu is the Phoenix Gem map also. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) They just take one of the children's menus. That's some like child finished for them. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) The kid already undid the word scramble. Yeah. And the word scramble is Raven's Point. That's mm-hmm. where the Phoenix gems are. Yeah, which is a set of mountains that's very close to their town. Amazing. So they have to take the expressway to Raven's Point. So Barley wants to take a different route. And Ian is like, no, we just need to take the expressway. It's the fastest way to do it. And 
Barley is like, do you trust me? And Ian is like, no, bitch. Get <laughs> on the expressway. Verbatim. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> no, bitch. <laughs> Cutscene. Mom realizes that the boys are gone and that they are on some fucking quest to find this Phoenix gem. Yeah, she finds like the D&D cards that Barley used to like show Ian where they were going on his desk and that Ian's room is a freaking mess from the gem blowing up. And so she's like, well, I gotta go get my boys. And she drives to the Manticore's Tavern. When she gets to the Manticore's Tavern, uh, it's burning down literally on fire (laughs) but then she sees the manticore and she is like have you seen my boys and she's like yeah i sent them on a quest and i told them about the curse and then she's like oh wait i forgot to tell them about the curse Corey. and then she's like we've got to save your boys so mom kidnaps the manticore from the police basically mom and the manticore are on their way to save ian and barley ian and barley are in guinevere and they run out of gas because Guinevere's gas gauge doesn't work. Amazing. I have been there. I used to have a car (laughs) where my gas gauge got stuck at like halfway. I was just like, hope I have gas. (laughs) So... Barley is like, Ian, you can just make the gas can bigger and then the gas inside will get big too and then we can fill up the car. (laughs) Obviously how magic works. Physics. And as Ian is trying, he clearly doesn't say it from his heart's fire because he accidentally makes Barley teeny tiny. So they walk to a gas station to get gas and Ian puts Barley in his little shirt pocket and then he's toting dad along and is yeah dad's still on the leash (laughs) the dog leash he's gonna walk away he doesn't know where he's going he can't see and as they uh walk up to the gas station a group of motorcycles pull in and there's no riders but there's just a massive group of sprites there's like 200 of them i refer to them in my notes as the evil biker sprites dad who's on a leash accidentally hits one of the sprites And they start being like, hey, watch it. They're all from like Jersey, these (laughs) biker sprites. And then Barley goes to the restroom and Ian is filling up the gas can. And when Barley comes out, he starts arguing with one of the sprites, trying to tell them like, did you know that you can fly? You don't need to have a bike when you can fly. So Barley and the sprites get into an argument. The dad on the leash accidentally knocks all their bikes over so now the biker sprites are trying to attack ian and barley and dad barley is literally like one inch tall so now ian has to drive and he is a terrible driver he's only he just turned 16 today like he has barely any driving experience ian goes to put the car and drive and barley says no it's o for onward and over the d on his prindle So it's over onward instead of D for drive. And there's the title of the movie, friends. Over onward. I'm going to do that to my car. So Ian has to merge onto the highway to get away from the crazy biker sprites. And he does it. Go Ian. Yay. 10 out of 10. And then he has to get all the way over to get off at their exit. The biker sprites are attacking them still. They are throwing chains at them. It gets very scary. The sprites start to fly into the van and Ian just turns the AC on blast and they all just like get knocked out of the car. They are back on their way to the Phoenix gym. Gas in the car. No more biker sprites. Barley blows back up and is now fully grown again. So the magic wore off Mm -hmm. and while all of this is happening mom and Corey are in mom's car and Corey is telling mom about the curse so Corey says that her sword is the only thing that can reverse the curse the curse crusher but she sold it to a pawn shop she pawned it for money for the Chuck E. Cheese. <laughs> <laughs> you do what you got to do. You got payroll out here. So they drive to the pawn shop and it's owned by this like lizardy. I don't even know what she is. She was horrifying. That's yeah. all I know. She was really scary. And they're about to buy it for, I think it was like $10 or something. And Corey was like, oh my God, my one of a kind sword. It's the only one in all the land, blah, blah, blah. Like hyping herself up for her own sword. And then the pawn shop lady thing is like, oh, actually this sword is one of a kind. It's the only kind in all the land. Um, We're going to need $10,000 for that. So Corey 
gets out her scorpion tail and paralyzes the pawn shop lady and they steal the sword. They are criminals. Criminals. Do what you got to do out here in these streets. Mom's kidnapping people, stealing swords. It's been a crazy night. Don't tell her boyfriend. She's doing it for her boys, though. So Barley gets big again, and he's driving now. And they get pulled over by a couple of officers. This is the lesbian officer who talks about her girlfriend and her girlfriend's daughter or some shit. I don't remember the whole story, but... Yeah, I don't know. She mentions, yeah, I think her, like, girlfriend's daughter. And she's she's like, my girlfriend's daughter is crazy. (laughs) Anyway, so... Ian has to disguise them with the wizard staff. So Ian is the front of Colt Bronco and (laughs) Barley is his ass, which is fitting. He's a horse's ass. (laughs) So the only thing about disguise spells is you can stay disguised as long as you don't tell a lie. You can't lie. Gotta tell the truth. So the two officers are asking quote unquote Colt Bronco questions and he's like oh yeah sorry I'm giving my girlfriend's son Ian driving lessons he doesn't know how to drive he's getting real crazy out here on these streets (laughs) and that's when our lesbian lady is like oh yeah my girlfriend's daughter is crazy too basically yeah that was that's our LGBTQIA plus representation that's our fucking gnarly A lesbian cyclops cop. (laughs) For 14 seconds in this movie. Amazing. Amazing. (laughs) Love that for us. So the one officer, the short not lesbian officer, fuck this bitch. She's like, yeah, Ian's great, but that other kid, Barley, he's a screw up. And Ian, disguised as Colt Bronco, is like, no, I don't think he's a screw up. And his leg turns back into Ian's leg instead of Colt Bronco's. Because he he told a lie. They start backing up into the van as Colt Bronco and they're turning back into Ian and Barley and they get away. And then Officer Spectre, that's her name. Mm -hmm. She realizes that the hoof prints turned into feet prints and that the whole situation was a little weird. So she calls Colt Bronco and tells him that she thinks something is going on. And he's like, girl, I already know. Like, <laughs> my, my girlfriend's kidnapped a manticore and stole a sword. Like, she's getting crazy out here. <laughs> so, at least now Colt Bronco knows where Ian and Barley are. So, they have that much information. Barley is really upset because his brother thinks he's a screw up. But honestly, like, he's what, 20 and living at home or whatever? I yeah. guess maybe not 20. I think he's 19. They said he started college and then came back for a gap year and never left. So we can assume he's like at least 19 or 20. You know, I don't think he's a screw up, but own it, sis. Like you dropped out of college. Just own it. I think it's also the fact that he like chains himself to things in this city for them to not knock down. That's what I'm saying, though. Own it. Own it. You dropped out of college and you chain yourself to national monuments good for you sis go off <laughs> you're not a screw up to me but not at fuck all. what your brother thinks am i right like mm-hmm. he gets all moody like you think i'm a screw up and i would just be like whatever think what you want uh barley starts blasting music in the van to not listen to ian and then they pull over and they get out of the car and they're arguing and then the dad just his legs he gets out of the little car and then he starts a little tippity tapping on the ground and he starts dancing he can feel the vibrations of the music honestly this is the first time i cried in this movie (laughs) i forget about dad being there and then randomly he'll do something cute like that and i'm like look at dad and his just legs purple socks (laughs) purple socks he's fucking wild (laughs) he's out here boogieing in his purple socks and khakis (laughs) he's fucking crazy in his purple socks So Barley looks at Ian and he's like, so you don't think I'm a screw up? And he's like, no, I don't. And he's like, well, then let's take the path of peril instead of taking the fucking expressway. The path of peril. And Ian is like, okay, great. Let's take the path of peril instead. He's not happy about it, but he's going to do it. Mm hmm. So they make it to the entrance to the path of peril, which is like off of a side road. And it's literally a dirt path so they take guinevere up the dirt path and they go over a bump and the bumper of guinevere falls off in the dirt and off they go and who drives by colt bronco yeah he does and he sees the bumper of the van on the ground and he starts to follow them up the path of peril gonna give chase so 
Anne and Barley are on their way through the path of peril and they reach a bottomless pit. Love those. You got to love a bottomless pit. <laughs> you just fall and you fall and fall forever and ever and ever. Mm hmm. And at the bottomless pit, there's an ancient drawbridge. But the lever to make the drawbridge go down is on the other side of the bottomless pit. So Barley tells Ian, you can make an invisible bridge and then walk over to the other side and let the drawbridge down so we can drive over it with Guinevere. Yeah. So the only way this invisible bridge spell works is if you actually believe that it's really there. And Ian is like, I don't believe it's really there. I could not do this one. I would have a full blown panic attack. <laughs> and it has me. to come from your <laughs> your heart's fire. Your heart's fire. It has to be from your heart's fire. You have to focus. <laughs> you have to believe in yourself. That's <laughs> too mm-hmm. much. I, I can never be a wizard. Already doing too much for me. I can't even say like two words in a row sometimes. No, you can't. <laughs> <laughs> Ian is like, okay, let's tie a rope around my waist. So in case I do fall something will catch me. So he does the first like step out with the spell and he freaking falls so far down in that into that ravine and Barley excuse me it's a bottomless pit whatever (laughs) and so Barley just like hauls him back up and he's like bro you gotta freaking believe. So Ian starts to believe and he starts walking across the invisible bridge and Barley's on the other side and he's like, you're almost there, bro. You can make it. And then Ian starts to get a little cocky. He's like, yeah, I'm almost there. Three fourths of the way there. And then the rope falls. But Ian doesn't notice. And Barley is stressed out. (laughs) Oh, my God. So Ian makes it all the way. And then he looks back. To, like, give a thumbs up to Barley and be like, look, bro, I did it. And then he sees that the rope is no longer attached to his body. And he falls, but he only falls, like, a foot. He catches himself and pulls himself up onto the other side of the bottomless pit. I mean, he made it. It's a hard no for me. So he lets the ancient drawbridge down. And when they get to the other side, Barley notices that there's a raven statue. Mm -hmm. And it's pointing with its beak. And what is it pointing to? Another pointing raven. Exactly. So it's not raven's point the mountain it's ravens literally pointing yeah with their faces yeah so it's a good thing they didn't take the expressway because they wouldn't have found the ravens yep they took the path of peril so colt bronco finds them because he saw the bumper fall off guinevere so he followed them through the path of peril they take off in the car (laughs) ian's like get in the car we're we're doing this so ian and barley and dad's legs i keep forgetting about him (laughs) dad is here the whole fucking movie (laughs) it's just his legs though They are in Guinevere and they're literally running from the police. So that's good. And they reach a dead end. And Ian is trying to do an arcane lightning spell to break some boulders so that they fall in front of the cop cars and the cops can't get to where they are. But Ian can't do it. He's he's been a wizard for literally like seven hours. Exactly. He can't do fucking arcane lightning. Come it's the on. the hardest spell. Everybody knows arcane lightning is the hardest spell. He's been doing this for 7.4 hours. Like, So Barley takes a pretty decent sized rock and puts it on the gas and sends Guinevere crashing into a boulder to block off the cops. And he says, it was just a car. Oh. No, Guinevere. He can build another one. Mm, Sad. So Guinevere crashes into the side of the mountain and breaks the boulders and then the cops can't get to where they are. So they are following the ravens and they get to a raven who's pointing down instead of like in a direction outward. And there's a mirror on the bottom that the raven is pointing to and Ian figures out that it's a puzzle and then he finds a map piece that looks like a little, kind of like a little cross. Um, And so they see that it has like little wavy marks on it and an X. And so they're like, oh, wavy marks means water. And there's a cave right next to them that has water in it. So they're like, okay, so if we make it to the end of this cave where the water is, we will get to the X, which is where the Phoenix gem is at. So they head into the cave and inside the cave are more rabbit hissing unicorns. <laughs> My new favorite thing. <laughs> <laughs> Ian and Barley are like, God, it'd be so much easier if we had a boat. And then at the gas station, Barley got some Cheetos. 
So Ian blows up one of Barley's Cheetos and they literally float down this water in a fucking Cheeto. <laughs> it's literally a giant Cheeto puff boat. And it's the good kind of Cheeto too, the puffs ones. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and while they're floating down, Barley's just eating the Cheeto puff Eating boat. the Cheeto boat. <laughs> Wouldn't you be? Yes. I mean, absolutely. Oh. So while they're on the Cheeto Puff, Ian is practicing some of the spells that he's been learning. He makes little fireworks. He makes some wind. And then they're talking and Barley has always talked about how he only has three memories of dad. But then he lets it slip that he actually has four memories of his dad. Uh, Ian is like, so you've been holding out on me. You have another memory that you haven't told me? And Barley's like, yeah, it kind of embarrasses me. I was supposed to go say bye to him while he was in the hospital, but he was all covered in tubes and stuff and it scared me. So I never said goodbye to him and then he was gone that made me so sad yeah because barley was what like two or three two or three he was little Mm. so he didn't say bye to his own dad makes me so sad and that's when barley decided that he was never gonna be afraid of anything ever again that's why barley's such a bad bitch because he's not afraid of anything So they get to the end of the cave and they're literally in some Indiana Jones shit (laughs) and there's like spears, then a gelatinous cube starts coming towards them. Barley has called it since the first second of this movie that there was going to be a gelatinous cube. Exactly. So they make it over the spears under a door and they barely get dad's legs through the door before it shuts. Thank God. Dad's still here. (laughs) Oh, yeah. Good thing he's only half a body or else he probably wouldn't have made it. For sure. And then Ian, Barley, and Dad are in a room with a trap door at the top and it's filling with water. And the step on the bottom of the floor opens up the trap door at the top. So they have to send Dad down to the bottom because he doesn't need to breathe. He's just legs. So they just throw his legs down at the bottom. It's so funny because they're like trying to get him to move using the the leash. They're They're like yanking the leash around (laughs) to like get him to step on the thing so that it opens the trap door. It was really funny. They get to the top. They open up the trap door. They get out. They don't drown. Thank goodness. They open up the door and guess where they are? In the middle of the town that they freaking live in. Ian and Barley and Dad come out of a manhole and they are standing right in front of Ian's high school. Go dragons. <laughs> <laughs> like imagine going through this whole quest. Like you go out of your city limits, like do all this stuff. And then you literally end up in the middle of the town that you were just in six hours ago. Yeah. Ian is really mad. He calls Barley a screw up and there's no Phoenix gem. And Barley's like, no, we just have to look for the gem. It's here somewhere. We're just missing something. And Ian's like, whatever. And he takes dad with the leash and goes and watches the sunset. They've literally got like 30 minutes left with dad's legs. So (laughs) it's purple socks. They're never going to be able to find the Phoenix gem so they can finish the spell and actually get to talk to their dad. So Barley realizes that the fountain that he was trying to save at the beginning of the movie which is across the street from the high school. There's like a bunch of construction around it. They're trying to tear it down. It's one of the things he chained himself to at the beginning of the movie that they wouldn't tear down. And he realizes that there's a spot in the center of the fountain that he can put in the stone that they found that the raven was pointing at. So they followed the water and then there was a spot for the stone that they found. So Barley is like, shit, I was right. (laughs) He did it. He's not a screw up. He's not a screw up. So he puts the stone in the spot but he didn't know that it would unleash a curse because the manticore forgot to tell them that part (laughs) yeah and while barley is realizing all of this ian is chilling with dad's legs and he pulls out the list that he made of all the stuff he wanted to do with his dad and then he starts having flashback memories of all that stuff that he actually got to do with Barley because Barley's his big brother and so he was there for his first bike ride and they got to play catch and learn how to drive together and all this stuff that Ian wanted to do with his dad. He didn't need his dad because he always had Barley. He did it all with Barley. I'm literally gonna cry. It's, I'm probably gonna cry. <laughs> I'm gonna try not to. <laughs> so the curse comes out of the fountain and it busts up up the whole town it takes the mural of the dragon that's on the side of the high school and that becomes its face and so it's basically a giant concrete dragon with misty wings 
Yeah. And it's really funny <laughs> it's because huge. the roar is the school bell. I loved that part. It was very cool. I loved that part so much. Yeah. So when the dragon roars, it's like a school bell. So mom and Corey show up. The manticore learned how to fly again. She At the beginning of the movie, she was... Nobody knows how to use their mystical powers, but now Corey aka the manticore is <laughs> flying and carrying mom so they have the curse crusher so they can take the dragon out they get knocked down by the dragon so mom picks up this massive sword mind you it's literally four times the size of her and stabs the dragon right in the core where it needs to be stabbed and it starts to break down a little bit but she doesn't have the strength really to drive it all the way home she's no manticore yeah I mean. She's doing that, you know, Sean I workout, but it's just not enough. <laughs> Sean I workout. <laughs> so she's doing her best. She's trying to hold the dragon down. Ian and Barley have the new Phoenix gem and they're trying to finish the spell to bring dad back. So Ian and Barley finish the spell and then Ian says, you say bye to dad. I'm going to go help mom. Yeah, he says, I don't need a dad because I've always had you. Ian goes to take out the dragon and mom is getting the sword and the staff goes flying into the water. Ian turns a splinter from his hand into another staff because he's like a fucking ultimate wizard now, apparently. He's killing it out here. He arcane lightnings the freaking dragon. Yeah, he does. And then when he does that, mom throws him the sword and Ian stabs the dragon in the core and breaks the curse, crushes the curse. Sorry. Yeah. Curse crusher. Yeah. So <laughs> once the dragon and all of its like cement and car pieces from like all the buildings and everything in the town comes crumbling down, it like surrounds Ian. So he's stuck in all this rubble and Barley is up on the hill and... Ian can see them through like cracks in the rubble that he's in and he sees Barley like give his dad a hug and they're talking and then dad starts to disappear and Ian just is like so happy that his brother got to say bye to his dad finally and then Barley comes back over and helps Ian out of the rubble and earlier in the movie they were talking about their wizard names. Barley says that he and his dad talked about it and his Dad says his wizard name would have been Wilden the Whimsical. And they laugh because it's like the worst wizard name ever. It's so cute. And then he says, Dad told me to give you a hug. So they hug. They go yeah. home and uh, Barley gets a new van. And Mom and Corey are BFFs. Um, yeah. <laughs> Mom has a giant mace that she carries around with her now. And they're going out to, I don't even know what. Who they're going to go to one of those fucking axe throwing bars yeah. or whatever. <laughs> And now Colt Bronco decides that he's going to run to work instead of take his car. And he takes his little cop hat off and he's got like Fabio hair. <laughs> and he goes running in the wind. Yeah. And all of the sprites, the biker sprites are flying now. And everyone is embracing their mystical powers. Yeah. You can have magic and electricity. True. <laughs> <laughs> and that's it. That's the end. I Yay! can't believe Ian didn't get to fucking meet his dad. He got to see his purple socks. I know, but it's just a bummer. But I get it. I mean, if the movie ended with them both just like meeting their dad, it would have been very anticlimactic, I guess. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> it was super good, though. And wizards. Do you want to go first? Sure. So I gave Onward a 10 out of 10. You had better. Yeah, I really enjoyed this movie. I really want to watch it again to like see the things I missed. I was so intent on like getting the storyline so we could like talk about it that I know there's stuff that we missed. Yeah, so um, I have it at number 19. So it's under Teen Beach Movie, but above Inside Out. Uh, this is my new favorite movie of all time. <laughs> I fucking love this movie so much. Nobody told me it was about wizards. <laughs> Super depressing because Ian doesn't get to see his dad, but I loved everything else. I gave it a 10 out of 10. I put it as my number four. It's under Toy Story and above Teen Beach Movie. I wow. love this movie. This is my new just, I just put it on to watch it. I've already watched it four times. Like, <laughs> I've seen it like every day since we watched Have it. Have you really? Yes. That's so funny. I love this movie. It was pretty good. I want to get a Guinevere. I'm going to make the D on my Prindle and O. Like, I'm not <laughs> even <Prindle>. kidding. <laughs> I loved this movie so much. Are you ready to guess next time's movie? Sure, Dan. Okay. 
Um, it is animated. Fox and the Hound. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, it is an old one, though. Oh. Like an older. Okay. There's a toy maker and a kidnapping. A toy maker and a kidnapping? That sounds really familiar. <laughs> it's like all animals. If I tell you what the main animal is, it'll give it away. Oh, 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 the great mouse detective. Yes. Oh, I was like, favorite. that sounds like a movie I've seen before. Yes. I love this movie so much. It's stupid. I like the Radigan song. Oh, Radigan. <laughs> Radigan. I'm just working with the, the Radigan Don't they have like <laughs> wine and shit too? Like, <laughs> maybe I'm just putting that in my head. <laughs> Can we make a TikTok dance? <laughs> just the Radigan song. Twerking to Radigan. <laughs> oh, I'm excited. I don't think I've seen this movie since I was like nine. I love this movie. It's a good one. It's a really good one. Woo! Yay! Everything is linked in the show notes, all of our social medias and our Patreon. Join our Patreon. What are you doing? Yeah, what the heck? Are you kidding me? Our Harry Potter episodes are honestly my favorite episodes that we've done so far. Even if you subscribe for one month and then listen to our Harry Potter episodes and then unsubscribe, I wouldn't even be mad because they're pretty fucking hilarious. They're pretty good. <laughs> they're pretty good. But don't do that. Don't do that, though. Stay around. Stay forever. Okay, bye. Bye. These opinions are our own and are in no way associated with the film or the film's production company. The cover art for Tragical was created by Johnny the Alchemist. The theme song for Tragical was produced by Ja Reezy. Contact info for both artists can be found on their Instagrams. Which are linked in the show notes. Thanks for listening to Tragical. I'm just alternating Budweiser <laughs> and soda. It's gonna be lit. I got four hours of sleep last night and I had to work really early and now I'm doing this, so. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Anyway. I don't do mornings, okay? <laughs> and I called it. Guy to ride. <laughs> My favorite commercial. I literally have socks with bananas. <laughs> I have socks with bears drinking beers. I win. I think you do. There might be a bear socks. Say it again. <laughs> Why? <laughs> beer bear. <laughs> <laughs> there might be a bear socks. That's what I call them. <laughs> what did I stutter? <laughs> No, for once you didn't, which is what is shocking. <laughs> Beer bear? It's easy to say. We can talk about his feet. <laughs> we can talk about Gorgamon's feet. Let's you, get a van. You've always wanted, like, a van or something like that. <laughs> you have. Uh, like, like a tricked out, an airbrushed van. <laughs> I, could, I could rock that. I think you could. Tragical. Tragical. <laughs>